We continue now at the top of Daf Lamed Chesam and Beis in Masech Sota. This is Sota Daf 38b. The Gemara continues Rav Chista's statement from the previous Amud. Rav Chista said that only a Kohen, only if a Kohen is a Shleach Tzibor, does he call up the other Kohanim to give the Birchas Kohanim. And that we learn from the Pasuk of Amor Lahem. We understand that is Amira Mishalahem Tehei, that the Amira has to be from them. Rashi explains, Mishalahem Tehei Azhar Azu HaKohanim Yasir, this warning, this calling up the, of the Kohanim to give the Birchas Kohanim, that has to be Mishalahem, it has to be from a Kohen, only if a Shliach Tziv, only if a Kohen is the Shliach Tzibor. And the Gemara continues, de Abai, the Halacha is like Abai on the previous summit, that only if there's more than one Kohen do we call up the Kohanim, do we say Kohanim, but if there'd only be one Kohen, we would not say Kohen. But the halach is not like Rav Chista. We don't only say that if a Kohen is a Shleach Tzibor, he calls up, but even if a non-Kohen is a Shleach Tzibor, he also will call up the Kohanim for Birchas Kohanim. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Some Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, From where do we know that a Kodesh Baruch Hu desires the Birchas Kohanim? Shanemar, like it says, And they will place my name on Bnei Yisrael, and I will bless them. And Rashi says, This is dependent, the Pasuk says, on them. That this bracha, the placing of his name on his nation, It's not like a need of Klal Yisrael, it's like a need of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu waits for Yisrael. He waits for the Birchas Kohanim, and then Vani Avorachim. And the Gemara continues, V'yomar Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Kol Kohen shemevarich mizbarich, any Kohen who blesses will be blessed, v'she'enu mevarich ein mizbarichim, and if he doesn't bless, he will not be blessed. Shanemar, like it says, V'avorcha mevarichecha, I will bless those who bless you. V'yomar Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Kol Kohen she'enu ola l'duchen over b'shlosha aseh, any Kohen who doesn't go up to the duchen in order for, to give the birchas kohanim, he, he transgresses three commandments, three positive commandments. Kosovarchu, Amor Lahem, and Vesamu Eshemi. Those are the three positive commandments that he transgresses. And the Gemara continues, Rav Amarav says, Choshishin, we are concerned, Shema ben Grusho ben Chalutzahu, maybe he's a ben Grusho ben Chalutza. maybe the reason why he's not going up for the Birchas Kohanim is because he's actually a Kohen that's disqualified from being a Kohen. Maybe he's the son of a divorcee, or the son of a Chalutza. And the Gemara says, Velo Pligi, but the Gemara says they're not really arguing. It depends if he goes up sometimes, or if he doesn't go up, or if he never goes up. If he goes up sometimes, Rashi says on the Chagim and on, on the Moadim, so then we're not concerned that he's a Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza, but again, it is a violation of the three assays. But if he never goes up for the Birchas Kohanim, then we're concerned that he's a Ben Grusha Ben Chalutza. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Kol Kohen she'no ole ba'avoda shuveno ole. If the Kohen, any Kohen who doesn't go up during the avoda, means to say during the brach of Ritzei, he no longer is able to go up in order to do the birchas kohanim, shenemer, like it says, Vayiso aron es yodav ve'lo'am ve'yivarchem, vayyered me'asos ha'chatos ve'ola va'ashlomim. When it talks about the bracha given by Aaron HaKohen, it says that he blessed them and he came down from the from doing the service of the chatos and the ola and the shlomim. And so we understand, ma'lahalan ba just like over there it was from the service that he was doing with the Karbono, so too over here the Kohanim have to ascend to the Duchen during the part of Davening, that's the part of Davening that represents the Avoda, the Brocha of Ritzei. But the Gemara continues, Ini, is that really true? V'har Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Asi, Salki, but Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi, they did go up to the Duchen even after the Brocha of Ritzei. And the Gemara answers, Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Asi, Me'ikara Havi'akri Karayu, Mimtalo Havimotu Hasam. Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi, they began to go during the Brocha of Ritzei. They just didn't reach the Duchen yet at that point in time. They reached it after the bracha, but they began before before the bracha ended. Ochiratani Raboshi, and it's like Raboshi taught Lo Shano El Shlowakar Sraglov. This halach is only true if the person didn't pick up his feet, if he didn't begin going to the Duchin. Avalakar is Raglovola, but once he began going to the Duchin, so he's allowed to get up to the Duchin, even if it's after the Bracha of Ritzei. Utana Nami, and we learned in the Mishnah as well, him hafta chaso shanose es kapa vechoser letfiloso. This is talking about a situation where you have a Kohen who's also the chazin, who's also the shleach tzibor. So if he is certain that he's able to duchen and then return to his tefillah, it's not going to get him confused. Rashoi, so then he's permitted. But the Gemara says, Vavinim, but, but we asked on that Mishnah, Halo Akar, but he never, he didn't move at all his feet, so how is he able to go? Ela Denad Porsa, obviously the case over there is that he moved a little. Hachanami Dakar Porsa, same idea over here, as long as he began going to the Duchen, that is going to be good enough. 
Rashi explains, During the Avodah, they already began to move. But they happened to be, they were far away from the Duchen. They were far away from the platform. They didn't get there until the Bracha of Ritzei was finished. So this is a Mishnah in Brachos. The beginning of this Mishnah goes as follows. He shouldn't answer Amen after the Kohanim because it's going to confuse him. Now, if he's the only Kohen, he shouldn't give the Birchas Kohanim. So again, we don't want him to get confused when he has to return to the Avening as the Shliach Tzibor. He's not going to properly return to the Brach of Sim Shalom. But if it's clear, if he knows the davening well, the low titar if daito, we know he won't get confused. Knows he has kapa vechozer letvila. So then he's allowed to do the birchas koanim, and he can return to his tvila. Rashoi Lisa has kapav again, then he's allowed to, to lift his hands, he's allowed to do the birchas kohanim. And so to that, the Gemar had asked, Valo Allah ba'avoda, but he didn't go up. You have the same problem over here. Here you have a shliach tzibur who's duchening, but he's not going to be going up during the bracha of Ritzei. Ela do'akar pur. So rather you give the same answer that he just moved his feet a little bit during Ritzei, that's good enough. Ushma no asagi bachi, we see that's good enough. Sha'oker ma'at raglav leilech, let's add a duchen ba'avoda. He picks up his feet a little to go towards the duchen during the bracha of the avoda. And you see from there as well that that is good enough. Hachanami again, do'akar pursa. He moves his feet just a little bit over here as well. And the Gemara continues, V'yamar Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, and Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says, A nosed and kos shal bracha levarech el we don't give the kos, we don't give the, the cup of blessing to the person who's making the bracha of birchas ha-mazon, we only give it to somebody who's a generous person. Shenemar, like it says, tovayin hu yivarech, it says that the person who is of good eye, who has a good eye, who's generous, he's the one that should be blessed. Kinosan milach moladol, because he gives from his bread to the poor. Al tikra yivarech el yivarech, we don't read it as yivarech, like he should be blessed, but he's the one that leads in the blessings. He's the one that, again, is given the koshal bracha for the benching. And the Gemara continues, V'yom Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Minayin shafilo ofos makir mitzari ha'ayin, from where do we know that even birds recognize a person who is stingy, Shanema, like the Pasuk says, Kichina mizora hareshes be'enei kol bal knaf, it says, for nothing they spread their nets in the eyes of those with wings, meaning in the eyes of the birds. Rashi says, Makir mitzari ha'ayin ve'en ochlem mishalem, the point is that the birds recognize those who are stingy, and they're, they're not going to eat anything from them. And uh, Rashi explains over here the pasuk kach darkam shal tzayodim lizros chitim usorim brishtam. It's the way of those who hunt. They put wheat and they put barley in their nets when they spread their nets. Kidei she yavoha ofos lechol in order that the birds come to eat. Ve'elu tsari ha'ayin. And the pasuk is talking about tsari ayin over here. It's talking about stingy people. So these stingy people china ma'avdin mizonos. They're they're losing their food for nothing. Shazorim brishtam that they put into their nets. Be'ene kol bal kanaf shafein makirin ben because the birds recognize that they're stingy. And they're not going to take from their food, so they're spreading their nets and they're putting the food in the nets for no reason. It's not going to be effective because the birds will recognize who they are and they won't take from their food. And the Gemara continues, V'yam Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Kol anana mitzari o'ayin, anyone who derives benefit from those who are stingy, over belav, he violates a negative commandment. Shanemar, as the Pasuk says, Al tilchem eslechem ra, don't take the bad bread, o'yin v'gomer kich moshor benafsho, keinu echolu shasei yomar lach, the stingy person, the person with the evil eye, he tells you to eat and to drink, to eat and to drink, but his heart is not with you. Rav Nachum Rav Yitzchak, Rav Nachum Rav Yitzchak says over Vishnei Lav, and actually he violates two negative commandments, because it says there in the Pasuk, Al Tilchem Ve'al Tisav, it says don't take from his bread, don't desire it, so again you're not supposed to take from the person who is stingy. And the Gemara continues, V'yom Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, and Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Ein Egla Rufa Ba Ela Bishvil Tzari Ayin, the reason why an Egla Rufa is brought, that's the decapitated, the decapitated calf that, that we bring, let's say you have a situation where a dead body is found, that is brought because of those who are stingy, Shanamar, like it says, V'yonu V'yomru, Yodeinu Lo Shafches Adam it says that the people of the city, they come and they say that we didn't spill this person's blood. 
And so the Gemara says, also bezin Would we ever think, would it ever occur to us that the elders of the court, that they're the ones that spilled the blood? What it really means is he didn't come to us and we let him go without giving him proper escort. He didn't come to us and we had him leave the city without any food. We didn't let him leave the city without escort. In other words, they're saying we weren't stingy in terms of supporting this guest of our city. And in that fashion, that's what they're saying when they're saying that it's not our fault. That's the procedure, that's the process of the Eglo Arufa. And the Gemara continues, Amar Ado, Amar Rabbi Simloi, Ado says that Rabbi Simloi says, Beis HaKnesses, Shekula Kohanim, let's say you have a Beis HaKnesses, and the whole shul is all Kohanim, Kulon Olin Leduchan, they all go up to the platform, they all go up for the Birchas Kohanim, and the Gemara says, Lamim Mevorchin, so who do they bless? Some Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says, Lachem Shebesados, they turn their blessing to their brethren that are in the fields. Ini, but is that really true? Vatani Abba, Breder of Minyam and Barchia, but didn't Abba, the son of Rev Minyamin Barachia, didn't he teach Am Shachore Kohanim, Einon Bechlal Bracha, that let's say the people that are behind the Kohanim, they're not, they're not part of the Bracha, they're not part of the Birchas Kohanim, so certainly the people out in the fields should not be included in the Birchas Kohanim. And the Gemara says, Lokash, it's not difficult, Hada Anisi, Hada Lo Anisi. It depends if there's an onus over here, meaning to say, in the people in the fields, they were forced to be in the fields, they had to work, they weren't able to come to the Beis HaKnesis, so they're included in the Bracha, but people who are behind the Kohanim, and they're not forced to be behind the Kohanim, so they're not included in the Bracha. And the Gemara continues, Vatani Rav Shimi mi Birsa de Shichore, but Rav Shimi from the capital city of Shichore, he taught Beis HaKnesses, Shakula Kohanim, that if you have a Beis HaKnesses that's all Kohanim, he taught as follows, Miksasan O, little Miksasan On and Amen, that some of them go up to give the Birchas Kohanim, but some of them stay to answer Amen. And to that the Gemara answers, Lokasha, that's not difficult, Hadi Ishtayir Be'asara, Hadi Lo Ishtayir Be'asara. It depends if you're going to be left with 10 people or if you're not going to be left with 10 people. And Rashi explains, Ishtayir Be'asara, Miktsasan Olin Leduchan, Va'asara Onin Amin, meaning if you have 10 people that are able to answer Amin, so then just some of them go up to the Duchan and the others stay and answer Amin. But Lo Ishtayir Be'asara, but if you're not going to have 10 people, Lo Chashiv Levracha, so therefore that's not really considered an, an important amount, Le Chudaya by the themselves, Hilkach Kulan Olin, so in such a situation they all go up to the Duchan, Umevorchen Lachem Shabbosadis, and they have the blessing, they turn the blessing towards their brethren that are in the fields. And the Gemara continues, Gufa returning to what we said above, Tana Abba Breder of Minyamin Barchia, Abba Breder of Minyamin Barchia taught, Am Shachore Kohanim Einon Bechlal Bracha, the people who are behind the Kohanim, so they're not included in the Bracha. And the Gemara says, Pshita Tzavi Yisariche Ba'ape Gutsay, let's say you have a situation of taller people blocking shorter people, Lo Mifsiki, that's not going to be an interruption, that's not going to stop the Bracha. The Bracha is still going to go on everyone in that situation. And the Gemara says along the same lines, Teva Lo Mifsiko, also an Arun is not going to be considered like a hefsik. It's not going to block the bracha. But the Gemara says, Mechitza Mai, but what if you have a Mechitza? What if you have a partition? Would that be considered a separation in terms of the Birchas Kohanim? And the Gemara says, Tashma, come in here the following proof. Dom Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, because Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says, Afilu Mechitza Shel Barzal, even a even a partition that's made out of iron, that's not going to create a separation between Klal Yisrael and their father in heaven. Iboilu, they ask the following question, what if someone is off to the side, he's not behind the Kohanim? And the Gemara answers, he says, Toshma, come and hear the following proof. The Tanan, as we learned in a mission, in Eskavin Lahazos Lafon of this is talking about when a person is using the Mechatos to purify things that are Tome, if he's intending on sprinkling in front of him, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daflamites Ahmed Aleph.